Hey everyone, yesterday my weak injured neighbor asked me about the Asus Zenbook when we were working out. I mean, the guy can't even do dips without using bands. <laughs> Seriously, it was pathetic. Anyway, I thought I'd throw him a bone and do a review on this Asus Zenbook since this thing is so light and powerful, unlike his shoulder. <laughs> Quick note, this is a no BS, no sponsored, non paid for YouTube channel. That means that everything we review, we buy ourselves. We can't be bought. So if you're looking for the realest answer on whether or not you should buy a product, please hit that subscribe button as we release new videos weekly. But no, seriously, the Asus ZenBook 15 is an absolutely impressive little laptop. If you're in the market for a 15 inch machine, but you don't wanna go with Dell or Lenovo, the Asus ZenBook is pretty much the next best choice. This particular variant is the AMD flavor, and it actually performs quite well. It does a benchmark single core of 1986 and a multi-core of 8451. And basically what that means, I'm gonna just pop it back to full screen wonders of the world. Basically what that means is that if you're trying to throw any sort of productivity tasks that way, it will handle them with no problem whatsoever. Unlike my neighbor's bench press. Now I wouldn't do any sort of triple A gaming on this thing, but nevertheless, it should handle things like Excel, PowerPoint, multiple Chrome, Firefox, Windows. You get the idea. Ultimately, this thing should be a little productivity powerhouse. You'll be all right. The LCD screen on this thing is in very typical ASUS fashion. That is to say that it's like, okay, but not wonderful. It's fine for the price and it's pretty colorful. It doesn't have a whole lot of backlight bleed on it. However, it could be a little bit brighter. If you're working outside like in the sun or next to a window, something like that, I think you may actually have a little bit of difficulty seeing with this panel. And that's kind of par for the course for Asus computers. For some reason, Asus always goes a little bit cheap with their panels. Now, one kind of nice thing about this machine is that the display does go all the way flat. I do really like that a lot. However, you can see, actually probably on camera here, the hinge is just a little bit wobbly. I wish that, wish that Asus used slightly better hinges or just sort of tighten them in such a way or maybe loosen them in such a way that it would just prevent a little bit of that wobble. The nice thing is that it is metal on metal hinges, so unlike those plastic crappy HP computers, the hinges won't break 10 months in. As far as features on this thing, it does have Wi-Fi 6, it does have Bluetooth, it does have a Windows Hello compatible uh, camera, but not a Windows Hello fingerprint reader. Thought that was a little bit strange. Not a big deal, but something to uh, talk about nonetheless. This is a test of the webcam on the Asus ZenBook <clears throat> 15. It is it's actually exceptional. It's very good quality. It does have a backlight on the keyboard. It does have Dolby Atmos speakers, which I'm going to actually get into in a moment. Ends up kind of beating my theory about advertising speaker quality. Uh, and then also has, as advertised right here, Asus's Antimicrobial Guard Plus. Basically, they say that they have some kind of coating on here, which is supposed to prevent like COVID from hanging around on your laptop. And Lord knows you don't want to get COVID lest you want to wind up weak and disabled like my neighbor. I don't know how long that coating lasts and I would love to do a test on that someday, but I haven't yet. Nevertheless, something that Asus says is there. Anyway, back on the speakers. Speakers get about a four out of five rating, which is very unusual because they say that they're Dolby Atmos. I had a theory that basically said if a manufacturer had to advertise the kind of speakers they're using, it probably meant that they're garbage. But the speakers on here are actually not too bad. If, I feel like laptop manufacturers are finally listening to me. You could definitely use this for like maybe listening to some music on the go, a podcast, maybe even watching a movie with some friends. It's fairly decent deeps and nice, nice bass, uh, decent highs and lows, not a whole lot of distortion across the band, and they get super loud. So yeah, ultimately I like the speakers on this computer. Stupid YouTube and your advertisements. Keyboard on here is great, very tactile, very responsive, dark keycaps, a numpad on the right side, and a backlit keyboard. Uh, trackpad, sort of a medium size, maybe like about like three quarters of the size of like a MacBook uh, trackpad. Overall, it doesn't go too bad and it has good like pressure, like a little bit better pressure than a Dell when you are pressing on it. So I like the trackpad. I don't let it, but I do like it. Uh, speaking of Macs, by the way, there is like a little Apple design queue right here where there's like this sort of cut out in the aluminum on the bottom there. You have to kind of open the lid a little bit better. It's just something worth noting. Very sharp, by the way, the edges on here. But we'll get into that in the mobile category. Battery on here is where I was a little bit disappointed. Uh, Asus claims that you get somewhere around 13 hours of practical usage, but honestly, we were only able to get about probably like eight hours of practical usage. You are going to have to max out the screen on this laptop if you wanna have any kind of decent user experience. And as a result, it's going to drain the battery very quickly. 
And even though AMD Ryzen processors are supposed to be sort of like, I don't know, a little more power efficient these days, we have found that they're just not quite hitting the mark. If you are somebody that's often hunting for a plug, this laptop may not be for you. Speaking of USB-C, IO. On the left side here, we have just a traditional USB, uh, USB 3.2 type A port. And on this side, you've got two USB-C uh, 3.2s that handle both power and display. Love that, you can daisy chain on them. Full size HDMI, TRRRS jack. Um, no ethernet, no camera card, and no proprietary charging port. That's okay, don't miss that. Ultimately, you know, and you probably could have had like Thunderbolt 4 or something like that on there. I don't know, I owe them a little bit torn. I don't think it's great. It's not terrible, but it's not great. I'm gonna say it's like maybe like a four out of five. I feel like they could have at least added a camera card. It certainly is thin enough. And while we're on the subject of its girth, let's go ahead and talk about the mobility aspect of it. This thing is very thin and light, unlike my neighbor. And the fact is, is that it is made out of nice premium aluminum materials that happen to fingerprint like a bad out of hell. I don't know if you can see this on camera, but just like sort of randomly touching it, you are, I mean, there's just like little grease prints all over. It's like I ate a cheese pizza and started reviewing this thing. But ultimately a little cloth will obviously wipe that right off and then you're just left with something that's pretty durable, lightweight, and can take a beating. Uh, I do think that overall, the materials that Asus used on here are pretty rock solid. Um, I like the aluminum in a Mac better, and I like the alloys that Dell uses maybe just slightly better as well. But overall, fit, form, and function design of this thing is better, in my opinion, than even like the Lenovo's. So that leads us to our last point. Do I recommend the Asus ZenBook? Yes, I do. You can probably grab one of these things for sub 500 bucks, which makes it an absolute steal. Is it the best laptop in the world? No. And is it crippled kind of like my neighbor with that shoddy screen? Yes. However, that said, it is going to work out for most people. And ultimately, I don't think that you'll have any like complaints if you actually buy one and use this yourself. I really like Asus products. They tend to be very reliable. In fact, we have found that there are more reliable typically than Lenovo products these days. And customer support on their stuff isn't too terrible either. I do like that Asus tries to be a little bit more innovative than some of the other players out there. They try to add like a few other like bells and whistles and just try to make things a little bit, I don't know, a little different. So I, I'm a, I, I am a big fan of that. And uh, ultimately their other stuff like their motherboards, graphics cards, stuff like that are always usually pretty good as well. So uh, anyway, uh, if you are a college student that has a plug always nearby, if you're a teacher, if you are a traveler that just needs something cheap and you can beat up, um, if you're somebody that maybe does like podcasting, maybe like a little bit of photography on site, and then I think that you could probably be okay with this computer. Uh, the NVMe solid state drive in there is upgradable. This one comes with a 512, but you can bounce it all the way up to two terabytes or whatever if you want. So uh, yeah. I like the Asus ZenBook a lot. I do recommend it. And if you have any questions on it, certainly feel free to reach out to us in the comment section. Uh, please like and subscribe. Please smash that like and subscribe button. Please visit us on Patreon, and we will be back with another video really soon.